Hey guys, I'm Jason Inman and we're here to talk about DC TV this week and I'm joined with Matt Atchity of Rotten Tomatoes. Thanks for joining us, Matt. Thanks for having me. Now you guys have a very exciting countdown coming on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, you know, we're kicking off our Star Wars coverage. It comes in December, the big movie, but you know, there's no time like the present to start talking about Star Wars. You can never have enough Star exactly. Wars. Exactly. But what you also can't have enough of is Supergirl. So let's talk about the second episode. This show didn't pull any punches. Yeah, you know, the show starts off strong and in our second episode, we see this epic throwdown between Kara and her aunt, General, yeah, General Astra. Astra. Right off the bat, I'm shocked that they went that big that soon. You would right? have thought they would have saved that for the season finale, but General Astra was like, nope, I'm gonna kidnap your sister and we're gonna have fisticuffs. Yeah, I can't imagine how we're gonna end. I mean, when you escalate a series over the course of a season, you end up with some really interesting stuff. To have them start off this big, this soon, it's gonna be pretty epic by the end of the season. Well, on this week's episode, we get to meet a classic Superman villain, Reactron. Now, he first appeared in the Dare New Adventures of Supergirl number eight, and he also, in the comics, has a golden kryptonite heart, which can take away a Kryptonian's powers. Yeah, that could really complicate things if we end up seeing something like that on the show. Especially when it seems like we're gonna have an army of Kryptonians coming after Supergirl eventually. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. Now let's talk about Gotham. Now, last week, did we see what I thought we saw with Edward Nigma? You did. Okay. We did see that, and it was really sad. It was this really tragic moment, and we're seeing Nigma kind of go down the road of insanity, and we've seen this kind of split personality from him, but we've really seen it when he stabs the fellow officer relatively far into the first season. And as that's been paying off, like we've seen that schism and it comes back together in this episode and we kind of get this new enigma or what we should probably start considering the Riddler. Is the Riddler. Yeah. And you know, it's a different take on that character and it's really interesting to see, kind of scary. Hopefully we're episodes away from the cane. I think we're probably a ways off from <laughs> it. I suspect, but you never know. You know, one of the exciting things about this one is that we get familiar characters, but we see new spins on them and, and they're willing to let things play out. Yeah, and the new spins is what makes Gotham so interesting because Theo, who you learn is the uncle of Silver St. Cloud, a classic Batman girlfriend, and this week apparently Theo has had enough of Gordon and he's gonna send Barbara his way. Yeah, Barbara is one of those people that she's like a weapon that even if you aim her in the right place, God only knows where it's gonna end up. There's a lot of chaos that follows in her wake. Speaking of chaos, let's talk about the multiverse of the Flash. Last week, we finally gave Cisco his superhuman name, Vibe. He has revealed his powers to the group and he picked his name as Vibe. I mean, are you excited about this classic comic book character finally getting to show up on the show? I am excited, you know, and that's not the only chaos we see or that we may see. We see Dr. Light, we get the reveal that, you know, her mask comes off and we see, oh my God, it's Linda Park. We've seen Linda Park in the first season. It makes things much more complicated for Barry. Which is a surprising term because Linda Park in the comics is Wally West's wife and in the comics, this version of Dr. Light is Camille Hoshi. So it's interesting that the writers of the TV show were just like, no, let's, let's twist the doppelganger even further. It's gonna be Linda. Yeah, when the doppelgangers show up, that's always interesting. There's always a good twist. We'll talk about one of those doppelgangers this, this week's uh, oh. Bad Apple of the Week. I'm giving a little bit of a spoiler, but we'll talk about that. But the, yeah, because this week's episode is called Inter-Zoom. So we can only hope that there's gonna be a big blowdown between Zoom and Flash. Yeah. Now let's move on to iZombie. So it seems like last week, Blaine discovered this weapon that it can use against the zombies. So it seems, oh. right? I don't know that you can really trust Blaine. Now, Blaine comes in to see Ravi working on what is supposed to be a cure. Gabriel, who's recently been turned into a zombie that Blaine needs to help Ravi find the cure, injects himself with something that he thinks is the cure, promptly drops dead, and Blaine acts like he's now got this cure, it's gonna be this great thing. I don't know that I totally buy it from Blaine. He's a guy that takes a left turn to tell a lie. He's always got some angle. You never really believe what he says. He's playing always, the long zombie con. He absolutely is. He's always playing the long game, and I think he's got some angle that he's gonna figure out a way to profit off this. And then this week, Rick Fox is guest starring as an NBA Hall of Famer, which I don't think will be too much of a stretch for him. Uh, you know, Rick Fox is always fun to see do a role like this. Now let's talk about the DC TV show that has the most hoods on it, Arrow. <laughs> <laughs> now last week was all about Constantine. Yes. How awesome was that? I, that was a really fun one. You know you know that chaos follows in John Constantine's wake. A really exciting show. Then we get this 
teaser at the end, this tag, oh my God, Ray Palmer's still alive. The Adam is still alive. I know. I know, like what what a weird thing. And I, I'm sure that Felicity has to be feeling bad because she's like, oh no, if I had only checked this message sooner. Yeah, exactly. And what does that mean for her will? What does that mean for her relationship? What's it gonna mean for the company? Right, what's it gonna mean for the company? What's it gonna mean for her relationship with Oliver? I, that's gonna be really messy. Yeah, and then this week, we hope the team is gonna save Ray Palmer from Damien Dark. This is all an excellent setup for Legends of Tomorrow. What have you thought about all the nice little setups between Flash and Arrow for the show? You know, you, you look at Ray and you look at Ray's disappearance and you think, okay, if you're really watching all of the different promotional material, you kind of get a sense he's coming back. But they really played the drama that really well. Same with uh, Sarah, Sarah coming back. Same with Sarah. You know, I like the character moments that we've seen with Snart on this. Yes. Uh, you know, they've kind of, pivoted on that character and I really like and what they're doing And a nice little hot there. girl moment on Flash as well. Yeah, it's yeah. it's pretty exciting. I think it's all going to come together and they're going to really earn the ability to put all those characters in that show. So I think it's going to allow the show to start fast right out of the gate, kind of hit the ground running. Now let's talk about our bad apple of the week, the character that we should keep our eye out. You teased this a little bit earlier. Yes. Who should we keep our eye on? I'm going to have to go with Zoom. You don't think it'll be too fast to keep our eye on? Uh, you know, it, that's a fast fast bad apple, but uh, yeah, definitely. Look, he's a guy who keeps sending people over to Earth One to kill Barry. I, it's hard to get a worse apple than that. I also don't think you can trust anybody that covers their mouth completely. No, I don't think so. Yeah. All right, thanks for joining us talking about DC TV today, Matt. Thanks for having me. Now that you're up to speed with everything going on in DC TV, make sure you click subscribe because tomorrow we have an interview with Danielle Panabaker, Caitlin Snow from The Flash. Mm -hmm. Plus, Neil Gaiman is sitting down with Pulitzer Prize winner Juno Diaz for a very special live stream conversation tonight. Neil is going to be talking all about his career and everything Sandman, so tune in. You can check that out at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time on the DC Entertainment YouTube channel.